Hey guys, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. Today, I'm gonna make your life easier. I'm gonna give you some tricks, hacks, and techniques that you can use while doing your alteration to make everything in an easier way. So let's go. We are going to use our domestic machine for my first trick. As we are going to sew jeans, I recommend to use a size 16 needle even an 18, if you can find it, is much better. But this is the one I have, so we will use this one. I've read a lot of comments of people having difficulty sewing jeans in their domestic machine. So we are going to tackle that. So I'm gonna change my needle in my machine. A lot of people think that we need a fancy machine to sew, but not really. This technology is so old that any machine will do. Of course, there are some machines that are more comfortable than others, of course, but don't limit yourself. I'm threading my machine. I just using a jeans thread, you know, just to, to let you know. And then remember that you have to raise the tension when you are working in jeans thread. I am making the length of the stitch the longer that we can. And here you go. So for our trick, we are going to use a button. Yes. A button and try to use one as flat as you can you know this one you see is not that flat it's a little bit convex so the flat will work better for the trick that we are going to use so if I have my jeans here and I'm going to do a hem, I'm using this one because it's a little bit thinner and this part is not so thick. So you see what I'm doing? I'm putting my button underneath the foot so it's more or less the same size and then I can just sew. That's it. Yes, that's the trick. Let me show you again. So when you go to the edge, before you go to the thick part, you lift your pedal put your button and then keep sewing. Mm -hmm. That will make your life so easy that you always think about me each time that you sew jeans. So that's the final part. I'm putting my jeans and my hem is done. You see guys, we can just maximize the tool we have to make our lives easier. My next trick is about pockets when you want to take inside but you have the pockets in the way you know what we usually will do we will just take in then remove the pocket and move it back and that really is very time consuming but i will show you a trick that I learned sewing African clothes. I am in a multicultural city and people go home and then they bring their clothes that they buy there. And I see how every culture make their clothes. And I learned by watching the African clothes this trick. I already marked my pins and I'm going to take in sides. And look at that. When I get to the point where the pocket is, what I'm going to do, I will just pivot my material and then I will keep sewing in the pocket and then sewing back until the point, pivot again and keep sewing. And what I'm doing is just make part of the pocket the part that was the sides before. You see, it's so easy that you cannot even believe it, right? So this is a nice hack that you can use when you don't want to remove the pocket and do all those kind of things. Of course, if you move the pockets, it will be a better job, but you know, not always you have the time or the customer have the money to do that and the results are fantastic. Now to clean, you see how I do? I do a kind of easy to search curve and then I will just go and search everything all around and I will search the other part and I will repeat the same at the other side of my blouse. And here you go, you see? It's all done, it looks slim, nice. It's a still flare, but with the shape of the customer and I want to show you the pocket, how it looks. It's completely invisible. It's all the same. You can just put everything in the pocket and use it the way you would use it before. 
This is not exactly an alteration trick. This is a custom made silk skirt that I did. It's called bias. It's like a circular. And what I wanted to let you know or remind you is that the bias coat is very tricky. It uh, sometimes loosen up and the length might change. So what I do, I do the skirt almost basically finished and let it hang it for a few days before I do my hem. So some days has passed and then now I am measuring everything and making sure that it is all good, like at the same length all the way around. That's really, really important when you are working with bias. After that, that I mark, you know, the different places, I will recut everything. Be careful to keep the nice curve for the hem and then I will just do my hem. So I will use my silk thread that was provided to me by my customer for her silk skirt. And I can tell you that this thread is fantastic. I really love to sew with it. You can feel like the difference, like the elasticity of the thread is different. And you know that I'm using my band roll to do a nice slick narrow hem. And here we go. This is the result. This is uh, my skirt and it's really beautiful. I forgot to show that this is a wrap skirt and the straps on the top, you know, finish the wrap. It's very beautiful. This next hack is one that I actually came up with when I had a customer who really wanted to wear a dress with this problem. The neckline with this dress is a little bit too big. I pinned it to know how much she needed, but as you can see, the neckline looks a little bit saggy or loose. And we are going to shorten the straps as well, but this is not part of the trick. So when you have that problem, you have many ways to do it. The first one, we already discussed it in another video. You can use a little bit of elastic and sew it with the under stitch inside and that will gather a little bit the material and that might make it better. But in the case of this dress, this dress is too thin and the elastic won't look good. Another option is to take one needle threaded and then you go and do like a three or four stitch and then you pull a little bit the material, go back and then keep doing it. This is a good solution, but it's not as permanent. So what we are gonna do, we are going to open everything. As you can see, I got every two or three stitches and uh, you can use as well the razor and take the thread pulling from there. But I'm too coward to do that with this material. So I'm using my seam reaper. And then I will go inside the dress and open the lining. Usually the dress are lined the whole thing, but this one is just lined the torso part. The skirt is not lined. So that's why I'm opening the lining from the waist, as you can see, and then I can go in and pull my material out, you see, after I open enough. And then remember the stitches that I opened, like every two or three stitches before? Now I can go from this side and just pull the whole thread and my under stitch will be removed. And then after that, now I can separate the lining from the dress. Sometimes to work with a line dress can be delicate, but truly is easier than it seems. I'm opening my whole neckline and with this you have to be so careful because you don't want to pull the material at all because you don't want the material to lose the shape. So now that I have everything open, now I will mark, I fold the lining in the center and then I will go to the sides to find the center between the sides. And when I found it, I will mark it with my shock and these are the points where I'm gonna make my darts. So these are like a baby darts, very small, because I don't know if you remember the pin, it wasn't like really that much that she needed. It's just that it makes the difference. So I did my first baby dart, and now I'm gonna make my other baby dart at the other side 
provide the same distance and the same size. Here you go, they are both done. And now what I'm gonna do, I will set the length of the stitch to the maximum and then I will go and reduce the tension in my machine. That way I can make one stitch on my top of the dress. After I do my this stitch, I will pull the thread a little bit to gather the material. You know, in Spanish, there is a word for what I'm going to do for this gathering. I really have looked it up, and in English it's gathering, but in Spanish you said gathering more like for ruffles, and for that you have another word that is embeber. But um, I cannot find this word in English, and uh, if somebody find that word, please let me know, please. Because it's not like exactly stay a stitch. I really wouldn't know what to say. So now that uh, my material is a little gathered, not gathered with ruffles or pleats, I'm pinning my two materials together for sewing. And then I will set the machine back to the original setting. And then I will make sure that when I'm sewing it, it doesn't present itself together. That's very important because you want it to look flat. This is the trick of this job. And then when I do that, I will do my stay stitch. You know that I have to go through the lining in, put the two material together, and then I will do my stay stitch. You see, you have to go like a little bit. If you open the lining more, then you work better. But then when you have to close it, you have to close more. So, you know. Mm. So this is done. And uh, now my next step is to iron the material. Try to remove everything that could look like a pleat or gather. And here you go, guys. This is the result. As you can see, it looks flat, even though I gathered it a little bit, and it's like strong when you pull it. As you can see, the one before, it feels more saggy and loose. On our last hack, or I guess alteration technique, I wanted to let you know that you can work with the front crotch when there is no zipper. You see this band, it looks horrible at the front, right? And uh, let me show you if we put the pins, what they can look like. Now it's pinned. As you can see, I pinned the seat, I pinned the U, and I pinned the thigh. This represent the U, how much I will take to the U, and this represent how much I take to the thigh. And uh, these are the pins, they are all marked, as you can see. This is the U, so the U I will take it at the end here, and then this one is the thigh that will take in the thigh. So I didn't want it to complicate, but I mark as well the back crotch because we have to take the front crotch and the back crotch at the same time because these pants are like the shape is not really the best. Let me show you what I mean. When you do a pattern for a crotch, you make two perpendicular lines and then you mark two inches and two inches and then you do a curve from the two inches to the other two inches. And this is the way the curve of the front crotch should be. Look at this one. Doesn't look at all the same, right? So this is what I have to take from the U. So I will mark it in my pants and then I will make the straight line and then I can now do my curve and of course I have my pins as a reference and I do a decent curve and then this is what I have to take from the thigh and then I will mark it in the leg of the pants and then I will just soften off my line to go to zero this is the back that is already marked. What I'm going to do, I will open now this cross with the crotch because uh, the U crotch is the last thing you saw. So you have to start from the leg. So I will take in first the leg and then the U. This is why I have to open this part so I can work comfortably. So now I'm prepared to take in my thigh and then I'll go like that, take my first time. I have to open just a tiny bit more and then I can take the other one. I finish opening so I can take the whole thing at the front and now I can take the other leg too. Now that my two legs are sewn, now I'm sewing the U. And I have everything done. 
now I will cut the excess of material in my curve so my curve lays good but I am leaving a little bit just in case I took too much and I have to let out. I always think in the redo, always, always. And here you go, guys. This is the result. As you can see, it's completely different. It looks like another pants. And, uh, you know, that happened when uh, people have a little bit of the belly. You know how it is, no? And, you know, guys, you know, that's sad. Uh, I have a question, actually. Uh, uh, yes? So, can you do this if you have a zipper? Oh, wow. That wouldn't be a hack. That would be a job. And a huge one. Hey guys, that was all for today. I hope that you like this video. If there is one of those tricks that you like the most, please let me know. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like. Thank you. Bye.